I now recognize the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Gibbs. You are now, thank now you. recognized, thank, thank Mr. Thank you, Mayor, Gibbs. Chairwoman. Uh, Dr. Ray, uh, you know, with all the chatter, I think it was going around on social media and the Internet, previous uh, days uh, to January 6th, uh, were you aware there was chatter out there, Director Ray? Uh, there was a variety of, of social media chatter, yes, sir. And, and then also your Norfolk report, it just... Uh, that it's just like an unbelievable intelligence failure, it seems like. And it's inconceivable to me that there wasn't briefings with leadership in here in the, in the Congress and, and law enforcement. Uh, as director of the FBI, you should be examining that, well, that breakdown, and so that never happens again. Uh, has there been any arrests made on the people, persons that uh, uh, did the pipe bombs at uh, RNC and DNC headquarters? Uh, no, we have not made arrests on that. We are aggressively investigating. We recently, you may have seen, put out additional uh, higher quality photos in an effort to see if we could get uh, better information from the public on it. Uh, that's one of the investigations that uh, we're particularly concerned about. Uh, the, the 500 people that have been arrested uh, January 6th, um, do the uh, charges, they range from uh, trespassing, disorderly conduct, uh, uh, assault, um, insurrection, or, or what, what are the ch charges? Uh, well, there are a variety of charges. I would probably better off to refer you to the Justice Department for the full list, uh, but certainly they have ranged from uh, assaults on federal officers uh, to different kinds of obstruction offenses. We've had some conspiracy charges. Uh, I'm not sure I could give you a, a but it, real it, full was it, catalog. Is, has there been any insurrection charges? Uh, I don't believe so. But again, there have been close to 500 and, cases. And you know, uh, but I don't believe have, so. Have been uh, people been on, held in jail since January or since their arrest uh, on trespassing charges or minor charges? Are still are they held in jail without due process? I don't believe anybody's been denied due process, sir. Okay. I want to change the subject here a little bit. Um, uh, uh, you know, we've got this big issue with what happened with the COVID, uh, the origins and the intelligence. And it was recently reported that three researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Virology became sick with COVID-19-like symptoms in November 2019 and sought hospital care for their illnesses. Are you aware, are you aware of any additional intelligence showing that COVID-19 pandemic was not the result of transmission from an animal to, to a human, but instead was a result of a leak from the Wuhan Institute of Virology? Uh, Congressman, I certainly understand, of course, the interest in the topic. Uh, as you may have seen, the intelligence community is doing a deep dive on the subject uh, and has not reached a definitive conclusion. Uh, and what there is that we're looking at um, is, of course, heavily interwoven with classified information. So I'm not really sure there's a whole lot I can say right now uh, at this point, but obviously we are working very hard and a lot of people across the intelligence community working on it. But you're not saying there, there could be intelligence to that. Okay. Uh, what's the FBI doing to investigate the origins of COVID-19, given that the Chinese government has engaged in widespread cover-up of its origins? Again, I, I can't discuss the specific investigation, as I've said, uh, in connection with other responses. Okay. But uh, as you may know, I've tried to be very vocal and intend to remain very vocal during my tenure as FBI director about the threat posed by the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese government in particular. Uh, and the FBI is actively engaged with our partners in the intelligence community on the assessment that has been called for by uh, the Director of National Intelligence and the President. Are you aware of any U.S. research funding to the Wuhan Institute was diverted to conduct research for the Chinese military, given that the State Department just reported that such research has been conducted there since 2017? Again, Congressman, we are dealing into all the facts and information that we have available to us as an intelligence community with the FBI as an active participant, uh, and that's really all I can say on this subject at this point. I know in, in previous questions you were asked about uh, uh, Portland and Seattle uh, riots last uh, last summer, and uh, you couldn't tell us how many people that the FBI has arrested and convicted, and what the charges were, especially when, on the siege on the on the on the federal courthouse out there, and also uh, holding uh, large areas of the of the of the city's um, hostage. Um, so, 
is the FBI investigation still going on, and, or has it changed since the new administration? Uh, no, we continue to investigate just as aggressively on our end uh, as before. Uh, again, I don't have exact numbers for you, but I know that last time I checked, I think we had on the FBI side, uh, or at least on the federal side, about 100 arrests in Portland alone. Um, and then there were about, I think, 800 maybe local arrests. But that, that information may have changed or uh, since my last report. Thank That's you. just Portland. That's just Portland, not, not nationwide. Portland. Thank, thank you, Director Ray. I'm out of time. You'll back. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. That is an absolute flat out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out. How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen, Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20 hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it, according to investigators? They insist he was intentionally targeting white military looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black on white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals, no matter what color they are? When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th, and they have to talk about things that divide us on, uh, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong. But that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. Yeah. You know, you look at January 6th. Everybody has said it was a tragic day. It never should have yep. happened. They wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But, you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson. He looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes, and he was like something like 40% of the people were just let in by Capitol Police but they don't talk about any of that. And you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house, trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hip hypocrites on this. They did, they, last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focused on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, th that, there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, th where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. <laughs> and I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings and cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that January 6th 
is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage ap across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went. They're essentially pitting Americans against one another by labeling it via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. And I don't agree with it. And I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG, DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th. And they put out a national call and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people. Right, and so a lot of this uh, the southern, the, relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out, and the media regurgitate that. And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they they have proven themselves to be, uh, you know, not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So, um, is white supremacy? It, is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most uh, biggest threat to to America? I think that's overblown, and I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that is, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day-to-day -day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure it does in certain areas. But is the is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.